we're going to do one last refresher of trigonometric functions because, again, when we start describing rotations of objects, being able to really know your trig functions is important. So let's start with the cosine. If you remember, the cosine is the horizontal base of, of a right triangle where the hypotenuse of that triangle sits along the unit circle. Let's look at what happens to the cosine as we move around the circle. When theta is 0, then cosine turns out to have its biggest possible value. It turns out to be 1, because that's actually that squashed line, that red line right there, is a really squashed right triangle, where the hypotenuse is right there and the side is right there, and the, and the opposite side is it's really small. So in this case, the adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse, and the ratio of those two is 1. Now, as theta gets bigger, right there, so now theta is through this piece right here. Then what's happening to the, the unit line? Well, it's going up this way, and the, the adjacent side is getting smaller and smaller. So let's do one more look. It's getting smaller again. Theta is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time theta gets to be 90 degrees, now the cosine of theta, the adjacent side, in other words, is 0. We can keep letting theta get bigger. Now theta is this. And as theta gets bigger, now the adjacent side is over here. And cosine theta actually just got negative. And as theta gets bigger and bigger and bigger, cosine theta gets larger magnitude, although it's moving further over to the left. When theta is 180 degrees, cosine theta is equal to minus 1. So actually, cosine theta got smaller and smaller and smaller, went through 0, and then got smaller and smaller and smaller, went all the way down to minus 1. By the time theta starts swinging back over to be 360 degrees, then cosine becomes less and less negative. This is what the graph will look like. So let's try to explore a few places on this graph. This is what the graph looks like. Let's try to explore a few locations around this graph. Theta of 0 is right here on the graph. That's where cosine of theta is 1. In other words, it's this radial line. Corresponding to that location, cosine of theta is 1 at that location when theta is 0. Let's take another easy location. Let's say theta is pi over 2. That's halfway over to pi, so pi over 2 is right there. Notice what looks like the cosine function looks like it's 0. Well, that makes sense because theta is pi over 2 is 1 quarter away around the unit circle. That's that location. And indeed, cosine theta should be 0 at that point because that's the adjacent side. Let's take another location. When theta is pi, I'm down here on that graph. And theta's pi is over here. So not surprisingly, cosine theta would be minus 1 there. And it looks like it's so on the graph. We can keep going around. When I'm at 3 pi over 2, in other words, 1 and a half pi's in radians, That's this angle theta. And at 3 pi over 2, cosine goes back to being 0 again. And then I can go to 2 pi. At 2 pi, it looks like the cosine function gets it back up to being 1. 
And that's not surprising because at 2 pi, this radial line is over here. So once again, that confirms my location for the tip of the unit circle uh, triangle, and cosine theta becomes 1. You can pick any old point in between. Let's take a point right there. Looks like we're somewhere in between 0 and pi over 2. That would be right about here. And because the triangle is going to look like that, this is cosine theta. So I hope that you can make the connection between a graph like this one and the unit circle, which is a little easier for us to master. Of course, we need to know all the trig functions, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And we've seen how sine and cosine work. They're the opposite or the adjacent side of the triangle. And you can use these trig functions to work back and forth if you know some bits of a triangle versus other bits of the triangle. So for example, if you knew the hypotenuse and one angle, uh, you know, the, not the right triangle, uh, the 90 degree triangle of a, of a right triangle, let's say you knew theta and r, the hypotenuse, then you can get the lengths of the other sides using the sine and the cosine. The opposite side will have a length equal to r times sine theta. The adjacent side will have an a length r times cosine theta. Alternatively, if you know the various sides and an angle, then you can also get the hypotenuse because it equals the opposite over sine theta, or you can get um, theta from knowing r and one of the, the adjacent side or the opposite side because you use uh, those trig functions. The tangent is defined as the ratio of the sine to the cosine. Again, if you know uh, various bits about uh, the, the triangle, you can say that the opposite is equal to the adjacent times tangent theta, or the adjacent is equal to opposite times tangent theta. It all just depends on what you know and what you want to find out. Or if you know both the opposite and the adjacent, you can deduce what the angle is because the opposite over the adjacent equals the tangent of theta. So it's helpful to be able to go back and forth between lengths, angles, and trig functions.